If you want to learn about Colorado's most famous peaks and mountain ranges and why they're so popular, stay tuned. I'm Ryan, a born and raised Colorado native. I'm Carrie, a Texas transplant and a Colorado newcomer. And we're a married couple living along the Front Range in Colorado. Join us as we share accessible adventures to help you explore the hashtag Colorado life like a local. We're definitely focusing on the most notable 14ers or the most famous mountains and mountain ranges. Basically the ones that we have on our bucket list or suggest that you add to yours. So what are some famous Colorado mountains, aka kind of probably the ones that are the most photographed? And what are they known for? At number one is Pikes Peak. It's one of the most famous and most recognizable. And it's number one on our list because it's right outside of our door. We can see it pretty much every single day. Mm -hmm. Also known as America's Mountain because it was the inspiration behind America the Beautiful Anthem. You know, the whole purple, purple... Purple Mountain Majesty. Yeah, that one. It sits at a whopping 14,115 feet tall, so it is indeed considered a 14er. And Zebulon Pike, by the way, Zebulon, what a name, was the first explorer who documented his climb of Pikes Peak, although he never did make it to the top, and he also predicted that nobody would ever make it to the top. And now we're at the top pretty much every day. Yeah, it's a paved road and everything. (laughs) You can bike or hike up and down the mountain trails, or access the peak via a car, but it is a super windy and narrow road. Um, You may also be required to take the complimentary shuttle up during busy summer months due to the limited parking at the top of the peak. And don't try to get there in the winter. It's very likely going to be closed. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's also the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, a.k.a. the Race to the Clouds. It's an automobile and motorcycle race to the top of the mountain. It started in 1916, and the track measures 12 and a half miles and has over 156 turns, climbing 4,700 feet at the start of mile number seven on the road up on the Pikes Peak Highway to the finish at the summit of 14,000 feet. At number two, we have the Maroon Bells. The Maroon Bells are actually sister mountains, and they're said to be the most photographed peaks in the Rocky Mountains. Um, If you ever see a generic picture of Colorado mountains, it's most likely a photo of Maroon Bells. Maroon Valley has a beautiful reflective lake with two gorgeous peaks, Maroon Peak and North Maroon Peak, both of which are 14ers towering over 14,000 feet high. They were actually named for their bell-like shapes and reddish color. This is why they're called Maroon Bells. They're located in the White River National Forest, about 12 miles from Aspen, Colorado. And as far as things to do, you can go for a hike or bike ride along any of the six scenic trails or enjoy some camping at various camping sites that are available. During the winter, you can snowshoe, snowmobile, or cross-country ski Maroon Creek Road to get to the valley. But our favorite time to visit is in late spring or early summer, when you are surrounded by fields of blooming wildflowers. And it is a really picturesque valley. So that's why it is the most photographed, just because it has the most beautiful pictures. I mean, you have mountains, water, (laughs) everything you can think of, sunset, sunrise beautiful yeah like when you say generic picture it it is Mm -hmm. generic rocky mountains but it doesn't take away from any of the beauty that it actually is mount crested butte is known for its super pointed shape and it sits at 12,162 feet so it is about 2,000 feet shy of being a 14er but it doesn't make it any less grand or any more daunting to have to climb it is located in the iconic mountain town of crested butte shocking yeah and name yeah big shock there (laughs) Just north of Gunnison National Forest, the mountain is home to the Crested Butte Mountain Resort and offers summer activities and skiing in the winter. It is home to lots of wildlife and is far less crowded than the other mountain destinations we mentioned here. You can come for the Summer Wildlife Festival or the winter skiing and then of course hike Mount Crested Butte for yourself. And number four, Long's Peak is another one of Colorado's famous 14ers and reaches 14,259 feet high. It is known as being the highest point in Boulder County, Colorado, and is the only 14er in Rocky Mountain National Park. It is located nine miles south of Estes Park and southwest of Loveland, Colorado. The hike up to the summit, called Keyhole Route, is a long 14 and a half mile round trip and a very risky climb even for experienced hikers. For a less intense hike, check out the 2.8 mile Mills Lake Trail, which has amazing views of the peak from all different sorts of angles. And even though it's the only 14er that is within the Rocky Mountain National Park, when you're there in the National Park, you'd think all of them would be 14ers. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that. They're all grand and huge. Yeah, you you probably couldn't point it out because they just look so enormous when you're that close to them. Up next at number five is Mount Evans. 
which comes in at a whopping 14,271 feet high. If you ever wanted to drive over a mountain, Mount Evans makes this possible. The Mount Evans Scenic Byway is known as the highest paved road in the United States. The peak is located near the mountain town of Idaho Springs, one of my favorite cool little towns mm -hmm. in the state. Mount Evans is a frequently visited and hiked mountain due to being this close to the Denver metro area. But despite this fact, you can still expect to see black bear, mountain lion, bighorn sheep, and white-tailed deer. So plenty of wildlife. And number six is Mount Elbert. Mount Elbert is the tallest mountain in the state of Colorado at 14,440 feet high and it is on the list of the top 20 highest peaks in the lower 48 states. The hike to the summit is 4.5 mile trail with an elevation gain of more than 4,500 feet along the way, so definitely not for the faint of heart. Um, still, compared to the other mountains on our list here, Mount Elbert gets the nickname of being a gentle giant, since many of the climbing routes are much less intense. One of the best ways to see the peak is actually from the window of the Leadville, Colorado and Southern Railroad, which weaves its way throughout the mountains for a two and a half hour train ride, which is very picturesque and amazing if you've never done it. Mount Elbert is located in the San Isabel National Forest, southwest of Leadville, Colorado and the Twin Lakes. So let's move on to some famous Colorado mountain ranges, because this is a topic I wanted to cover personally, because sometimes moving here for the first time, I didn't know what the mountain ranges were called. I knew individual mountains sometimes, but the whole range or, you know, a bunch of mountains together, I didn't know what they were. Yeah, a lot of people think that Colorado has strictly just the Rocky Mountains, and that is the yeah. only mountain range that goes through it. But in fact, there are many more. I don't know what constitutes a um, like separate mountain range, but it has to do with probably geology and the way that they were formed and if they have any sort of separation from a continuous chain or something. Mm -hmm. The San Juan mountain range can be seen when driving through southwest Colorado along the front range. And on a clear day, you can even see them from Colorado Springs. And we have from our house and other places in the city. The range connects cities like Durango and Silverton, and it is part of the San Juan Skyway Scenic Byway. What a mouthful, by the yeah. way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it forms a 233-mile loop in the southwest part of the state. The peaks in the San Juan Mountains are notoriously steep, so be prepared when you go climbing or hiking on them. And many of the peaks were explored and panned for gold and silver in the early 1900s. At number eight is the Spanish Peaks. And the Spanish Peak are a pair of mountains located in southwest Colorado and are often called breast-shaped hills or <laughs> the breasts of the earth. They could have just gone with twin peaks. I think that would have been. I know. Now, these two peaks are the West Spanish Peak, which reaches 13,626 feet high, and it is the easternmost mountain that's over 13,000 feet in the United States. And East Spanish Peak, right next to it, reaches 12,683 feet high. The Spanish Peaks became a national natural landmark in 1976 and are an important landmark of the Santa Fe Trail, which stretches from Missouri to New Mexico. The most popular trails you can hike with views of the Spanish Peaks include the Hogback Nature Trail, which is an easy two-mile hike in Lanthrop State Park, and La Veda Loop Trail, which is an easy to moderate three-mile hike. The peaks can be seen on very clear days from Colorado Springs or Alamosa and all the way down to Raton, New Mexico. At number nine, we wanted to mention the Continental Divide. So it's also known as the Great Divide, and it essentially separates the Pacific Ocean from the Atlantic Ocean. Stretches all the way from Canada down to the Gulf of Mexico and beyond. The Rocky Mountain Range forms a significant part of the Continental Divide in Colorado and New Mexico. And you can hike over the divide via the Continental Divide Scenic Trail, which spans over 3,100 miles of hiking, biking, and camping. Imagine doing that. I mean... I mean, that makes the Appalachian Trail look puny. Mm -hmm. Sheesh. Or you can drive over the Trail Ridge Road and get out to view the divide from a distance and take photos. Uh, fun fact, the Trail Ridge Road is the highest continuous paved road in the U.S. Or you can skip the I-70 traffic and drive through Loveland Pass, which is a series of twisting and winding roads that meets up with the divide at 11,900 feet. At number 10, and our final one, is the Sangre de Cristo Mountains which are the southernmost range of the Rocky Mountains and contain several 14ers. Sangre de Cristo is Spanish for blood of Christ, and they received this name from their reddish color that was very bright during sunrise and sunset, as Colorado, as you know, used to be a uh, Spanish territory. Mm -hmm. These mountains stretch 225 miles from Salida, Colorado, all the way down to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and are one of the longest ranges in the world. 
They are home to some of the best rock climbing, downhill skiing, and whitewater rafting, with hundreds of miles of trails for biking and hiking. Mount Crusted Butt. No, it's Mount Crusted Butte. Mount Crusted Butt. <laughs> Maroon Peak and North Maroon Peak, both of which are 14ers towering over 14 feet high. They were actually named... What? You said 14 feet high. Towering over 14,000 feet high. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to show your support. And to get new videos from us every week, be sure to hit that subscribe button.